I mean, you worship Xerxes, right? Why not other Aedra? Oh, I think I see where you're mistaken. Kinnereth is an Imperial Goddess, not an Aedra. Technically speaking, anyway. We have Yifre, not Kinnereth, although they're not exactly the same. Kinnereth has more in common with pre-Imperial Nordic no kind than Yifre. I know what you said, but I only wanted to speak to him for a moment. Well, it stops now, and that's fine. Right, you worship the Reclamations, don't you? Technically, though not devoutly. Oh. Goodness. This bridge is beautiful. <laughs> it seems green. I obviously can't see it, but it smells green. There is a lot of green on this bridge. Right. Uh, the Reclamations. So you are truly out of your depth in all things, Adric. More than you know. Oh? Well, I've never been a scholar of faith, per se. I'm hardly in my depth with anything Daedric. And I say that coming from a family... Wow. I say that coming from a family where my father pays lip service to Mephala and what I remember of my mother involves her being half mad and her devotion to Azura. Don't read into that, it's just a Dunma thing. If I were to worship one of the House of Troubles, then you could be concerned for me. Oh, oh, wait, don't tell me. That's... Uh, Molag Ball, Mehrunes Dagon, Sheagorath, and Vemina? Close. Malakath, not Vemina. I always miss one. But you grew up with that, I suppose. I did, yes. I also had a bit of a rebellious streak as a child. I contemplated running away from home just to join an orc stronghold and devote myself to Malakath, just to spite society. Obviously, I didn't. What stopped you? I'm not an orc, obviously. Are you going to be warm enough? We are going up the side of a mountain. Oh, trust me. In the rift? This is just... Perfect. It's... Trust me, in this weather, this armor just absorbs all of the light. It's quite warm. Obviously, I'm from Somerset. I like warm, but this is... I'll be fine. Right. By the way, there's a... A tablet here, etched with... Some old script. Would you like me to read it for you? If you would, I would attempt, but you know me. Right, what have we here? Emblem 1. Before the birth of men, the dragons ruled all Mundus. Their word was the voice, and they spoke only for true needs. For the voice could blot out the sky and flood the land. I wonder what that means. You know, I'm not actually sure. This looks particularly treacherous. Watch your footing. Or... Pay attention to your footing, anyway. We're learning. We're getting there. I wonder if there are actually 7,000 steps on this mountain. Hang on. Bear. Where are you, Bear? There you are. I don't feel like messing about with bears today. Well, that works. The arrow didn't kill it? The arrow did not kill it. Ah. 
There's a burrow here. Oh, interesting. Oh, sorry. We're going up and around. I imagine there will be a not insignificant number of switchbacks. Oh, yes. The joys of traveling in Skyrim. Gods, the air is getting thin already. I don't like that. I'm used to it. Really? Well, of course. Breathing through ash does tend to affect one's lungs a bit. Right, and that also is why you sound the way you do. Indeed. Believe me, I am not the worst. Hello, sir. I hate to interrupt. Keep an eye out for wolves if you're headed up the path to High Hrothgar. What are you doing? I like to spend time up here. Walk the steps. Meditate on the emblems. Doesn't hurt when I bag some game along the way. Right. And now it's raining. So, we did try to ask down in Iverstead, but... Did you hear that sound from up on top of the mountain? I did. Strange days when the monks will do that. I wonder what it means. Great. So you're in the same boat as the rest of us, I see. Good day. Well... This has just become significantly... Less pleasant and more treacherous. As an adjust. Right, there's another tablet here. Emblem 2. Men were born and spread over the face of Mundus. The dragons persisted over the crawling masses. Sorry. The dragons presided over the crawling masses. Men were weak then and had no voice. Men were weak and had no voice. I can't imagine a time when people didn't have voices. And also, is that referring to men as in men, or men as in everyone? Your guess is as good as mine. Alright, let's keep it moving, shall we? This is absolutely dreary. You know... Gods, that's cold. I, uh... I always thought that it was, um... Not... A good thing to be traveling on a mountain when it's actually precipitating. That's one of the things that you read about and, um... Right. Not good. Hello. Oh god, that's cold. <laughs> Sorry, I lost my footing there. Yeah, I don't blame you. It is... I'm sort of regretting not getting a... A thicker cloak. Are you alright? Oh yes. Just, I have to be careful with this stick. It is pointy at the end. Right. Let's keep moving. That is... Incredibly awful. I'm not sure... A torch would do us much good in this weather, but... Right. Come on, Sira. We're going to pick up the pace of it.
Sierra. Oh, there you are. Sorry. God, it's hard to hear over the snow. Indeed, there's another tablet. We'll make this one brief, shall we? Emblem 3. The fledgling spirits of men were strong in the old times, unafraid to war with the dragons and their voices. But the dragons only shouted them down and broke their hearts. Okay. Men warred with dragons. Good to know, I think. Of course. Well, this is what we get for waiting for that shop to open, yes? You know, it was either that, or I try to make this trek in just the, uh, just the tunic and the old Nornferd hood, which I don't exactly, I'm not keen on the idea. No, as well you shouldn't be. Picking up the pace. Right. Lead on. I'm basically just sticking to the stairs. They're very, very obvious. Are you counting? <laughs> Actually. I'll let you know when we get to the top. I can't imagine there are actually 7,000 of these. And if there are... This is going to be a very long day indeed. Indeed. God, there's someone up here, sitting in the snow. Excuse me, ma'am. How are you out here, with no sleeves? Keep an eye out for wolves if you're headed up the path to Hyrothgar. Yeah, we've seen bears, but no wolves. What are you doing? Walking the steps, meditating on the emblems. I make this trip every few years. Did you hear that sound a few days ago? I was just outside Iverstead when it happened. It's an exciting moment. Nothing like this has happened in centuries. Right. Do you mind if I read that emblem? I. All right. I will make it brief, then. Gods. Emblem 4. Kain called on Parthenax, who pitied man. Together they taught men to use the voice. Then dragon war raged, dragon against tongue. Ugh. That's... interesting. Nordic poetry. It doesn't exactly flow the same as, say, old Mary poetry, but... Ah. So you do have a bit of it. A bit of what? Ultimate superiority. Sorry, I didn't realize... I try not to be like that, but... I mean... So much culture around Tamriel came directly from us. So, it's sort of hard not to, you know, think of the, the old ways, the progenitors of all of this cultural... All of these cultural things, and... God, it's freezing. Sorry. Oh, hello. That's a troll. I've got it! Don't got it. Come on. There we are. I'm having a bit of trouble with my magic today. <laughs> you, uh... No, I'm not going to make that joke. I'm much more refined than that. Is that a joke? That is, in fact, a joke. Right. <laughs> Another one. I'm going to use it as a windshield for a bit. 
Emblem 5. The men prevailed, shouting Alduin out of the world. Proving for all that their voice was... That their... Oh, gods. Pro proving for all that their voice too was... That their voice too was strong. Although their sacrifices were manifold. What exactly is Alduin? Or who exactly is Alduin? I have no idea. Like I said, I'm not exactly a scholar of faith. Right, we're moving. Yep, I figured it's easier to hear your footsteps in the snow, although it's also very difficult to hear them in general. Yes. That is the one piece of my magic that appears to be working. So... We keep on moving. How many steps are you at? At... Uh... uh don't say that because I will lose count. Hang on. Uh... Right. I'm just going to keep that in my head so I don't confuse myself. I can talk and count at the same time. I just can't say numbers out loud and count at the same time. Understood. Oh, we've got another one. Emblem 6. With roaring tongues the sky children conquer. Founding the first empire with sword and voice whilst the dragons withdrew from this world. That must be the first empire of men, because the aliens definitely had an empire before. The men never did, as far as I know. There are some topics that were, shall we say, controlled back home. I imagine so. Gods. <laughs> I'm going to get frostbite out here. I can't imagine how you're doing this without a hood. Ah, uh, long hair. Long, thick hair. Right. Another one. Emblem... Seven. The tongues at Red Mountain went away humbled. Jürgen Windcaller began his seven-year meditation to understand how strong voices could fail. Oh, the Battle of Red Mountain. That what I know. Oh. Uh, something, something. Uh, Ash King Wolfhearth defeated by the Tribunal, I think. Uh, disappearance of the Dwemer. I have. That's about all I know. <laughs> that's a fair bit more than I know. And you would think I know more, considering. Oh, I almost missed one. Emblem 8. Jürgen Windcaller chose silence and returned. The 17 disputants... Could dispu disputants? Disputants? Could not shout him down. Jürgen the Calm built his home on the throat of the world. Right, the mountain is the throat of the world. And it is very, very cold. Gods. I should not be surprised that very rainy spring in Skyrim turns to very snowy spring on top of the mountains. That does make sense. <laughs> Seriously, how are you not bothered by this? Ha, huh, Sira, is they? Sorry. Um, I honestly don't know. Oh, ah, uh, well, we're almost there. I can see the fort keep thing. Gods. I don't like this. Right. Another tablet. Emblem 9. For years all silent, the Greybeard spoke one name. Tiber Septim. Stripling, then. Stripling? Stripling? Nords. Was summoned to Hrothgar. 
they blessed and named him Dovahkin. Ah, that might... Interesting. Uh, uh, Dovahkin might be what that sound was that we heard. I think you might be right, which sort of puts you in the same league as Type of Septim. I think they meant you. Well, it certainly meant something. In theory, it means something to the Nords that has completely bypassed both of us. Indeed. Last tablet. Okay. Emblem 10. The voice is worship. Follow the inner path. Speak only in true need. Huh. Okay. I have no idea what that means. Neither do I. But we are at High Hrothgar. And now I know why Klimic didn't want to come up here. It is. Gods. Now. I know he said that the Greybeards don't usually accept visitors, but what do you say we go inside and just get out of the cold for a bit? I think that would be a good idea considering that you are... You sound like you're shivering. I am. I've been shivering since... A while. How many steps, by the way? <laughs> well, it turns out that the Nords are just bad at math and misplaced a zero. Oh. There are 717 steps. Alright. <laughs> okay. Will they let us in? I certainly hope so. Oh, that's better. Oh. Oh? Old men up ahead. I think we may have attracted the attention of the Greybeards. Oh, okay. Am I supposed to go talk to them? You might as well. So, a dragonborn appears at this moment in the turning of the age. Uh, are you calling me Dragonborn? What does that even mean? First, let us see if you truly are Dragonborn. Let us taste of your voice. I don't even know what you mean. <laughs> uh... Strike us with the power of your voice. Well, yes, but... Hmm. Well, here goes... something. Do not be afraid. Your shout will not harm us. Okay. Here goes... Fools! Wow. Dragonborn, it is you. Welcome to High Hrothgar. You just knocked them clean off their feet. I am Master Angir. I speak for the Greybeards. Now, tell me, Dragonborn. Why have you come here? Um, because it's warmer in here than it is outside, mostly. We heard a noise, we wanted to come investigate, and now I want to find out what it means to be Dragonborn. Well, we are here to guide you in that pursuit, just as the Greybeards have sought to guide those of the Dragonblood that came before you. You mean like... Tiber Septim? And am I not the only Dragonborn? You are not the first. There have been many of the Dragonblood since Akatosh first bestowed that gift upon mortal kind. Whether you are the only Dragonborn of this age, that is not ours to know. 
You are the only one that has been revealed thus far. That is all I can say. Oh, okay. Who are you? And what is this place besides a monastery up on top of a mountain? We are the Greybeards, followers of the Way of the Voice. You stand in High Hrothgar, on the slopes of Kinarith's sacred mountain. Here we commune with the Voice of the Sky, and strive to achieve balance between our inner and outer selves. So, sort of like... I can get behind that. Right. I... I take it I'm here to learn something. So, I guess I'm ready to learn. You have shown that you are Dragonborn. You have the inborn gift. But, do you have the discipline and temperament to follow the path laid out for you? Uh, that remains to be seen. Without training, you have already taken the first steps towards projecting your voice into a thum, a shout. Now let us see if you are willing and able to learn. When you shout, you speak in the language of dragons. Thus, your dragon blood gives you an inborn ability to learn words of power. All shouts are made up of three words of power. As you master each word, your shout will become progressively stronger. Master Einarth will now teach you Ro, the second word in unrelenting force. Ro means balance in the dragon tongue. Combine it with Fus, force, to focus your thumb more sharply. Ro. Well, this could be interesting. Am I supposed to read something? Well, yes, but it's sort of glowing on the floor, so you might have a chance. I'll stay here for the moment. You do your thing. Right, I will s let you stay out of the way. You learn a new word like a master. You truly do have the gift. But learning a word of power is only the first step. You must unlock its meaning through constant practice in order to use it in a shout. Well, that is how the rest of us learn shouts. As Dragonborn, you can absorb a slain dragon's life force and knowledge directly. Is that what As I did? As part of your initiation, Master Einarth will allow you to tap into his understanding of Ro. That is what I did. Oh... Master your new form. Alright. What am I supposed to be doing? Use your unrelenting force shout to strike the targets as they appear. Oh. Oh gosh. Behind me. Very nice. Well done. Again. You learn quickly. Once more. That is fun. <laughs> Impressive. Your thumb is precise. You show great promise, Dragonborn. We will perform your next trial in the courtyard. Follow Master Bori. I would, if I knew which one Master Bori was. How many are there? Four. I'll come with you now, guide you and whatnot. That was fairly impressive, but please keep it to yourself. Try not to fling me off the mountain anytime soon. <laughs> I'll do my best. Uh, apologies if that ever ends up happening. I hear where the doors are. Stairs. You're learning. I'm working on it. Whoa. What was that? Myth, you probably have better idea than I do right at the moment. 
I'm going to stand up here, well away from the men who can shout. I hope you don't mind. Uh-huh. Nope, I don't want you with the way of whatever that- Oh! Hey, the sun's out. We will now see how you learn a completely new shout. Master Bori will teach you Wold, which means whirlwind. Wold. Where's the heat? There's you the heat. You must hear the word within yourself before you can project it into a thumb. Approach Master Bori and he will gift you his knowledge of Wold. So it's not summoning whirlwinds, I take it. Now we will see how quickly you can master a new shout. Right. Master Wolfgar will demonstrate whirlwind sprint. Then it will be your turn. Uh oh. Master Bori? Rex! Wolf! What? Now it's your turn. Stand next to me. Okay. Master Bori will open the gate. Use your whirlwind sprint to pass through before it closes. Am I lined up? I hope I am. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> uh. Help? I'm lost. <laughs> um. <laughs> Right, uh, we just turn around and keep walking, yes? Oh, sorry. Uh, well, the. That'll do. Thank you! Right, um, Arngear, if you haven't. Your quick mastery of a new thume is. Uh, astonishing. I'd heard the stories of the abilities of Dragonborn, but to see it for myself. Uh, just so you know, and so that all of you are aware, I can't see anything. So, please don't have me do that again. Well, that's not true. I can see, like, you are very fuzzy. And I cannot tell if you're standing in front of a pillar or a person. Anyway, uh, I don't know how I did that. It just sort of happened. You were given this gift by the gods for a reason. It is up to you to determine how best to use it. You are now ready for your last trial. Retrieve the horn of Jürgen Windcaller, our founder, from his tomb in the ancient fane of Ustengrav. Remain true to the way of the voice, and you will return. Ah... Uh. So we read about Jürgen Windkoller on the way up. Who was he? He was a great war leader of the ancient Nords, a master of the voice or tongue. After the disaster at Red Mountain, where the Nord army was annihilated, he spent many years pondering the meaning of that terrible defeat. He finally came to realize that the gods had punished the Nords for their arrogant and blasphemous misuse of the voice. He was the first to understand that the voice should be used solely for the glory and worship of the gods, not the glory of men. Jürgen Windcaller's mastery of the voice eventually overcame all opposition, and the way of the voice was born. What is the way of the voice? The voice was a gift of the goddess Kinnereth at the dawn of time. She gave mortals the ability to speak as dragons do. Although this gift has often been misused, the only true use of the voice is for the worship and glory of the gods. True mastery of the voice can only be achieved when your inner spirit is in harmony with your outward actions. In the contemplation of the sky, Kinnereth's domain, and the practice of the voice, we strive to achieve this balance. That's why you're up on top of a mountain, right? To be closer to Kinnereth? Or something like that? Closer to the sky, anyway. 
I'm not a Nord, obviously, <laughs> but I respect your ways and I'll do my best to follow the way of the boys as well. That is commendable. But remember, the dragon blood is itself a gift of Akatosh. Do not try to deny that gift. Your destiny requires you to use your voice. Why else would Akatosh have bestowed this power upon you? If you remember to use your voice in service to the purpose of Akatosh, you will remain true to the way. The... <laughs> oh, the irony. My voice is what got me into this mess in the first place. Anyway, why are all of the shouts in the dragon language? Dragons have always been able to shout. Language is intrinsic to their very being. There is no difference in the dragon tongue between debating and fighting. Shouting comes as naturally to a dragon as breathing or speaking. In mythic times, when mortal kind was in great need, the goddess Kinnereth granted us the ability to speak as dragons do. For most people, long years of training are required to learn even the simplest shout. But for you, the dragon speech is in your blood, and you learn it almost without effort. Huh. And what does it mean to be dragonborn? I have... I have never encountered this before, aside from the dragon blood of the kings of the Imperial Province and whatnot. Dragons have the inborn ability to learn and project their voice. Dragons also are able to absorb the power of their slain brethren. A few mortals are born with similar abilities, whether a gift or a curse has been a matter of debate down through the centuries. What you have already learned in a few days took even the most gifted of us years to achieve. Some believe that Dragonborn are sent into the world by the gods at times of great need. We will speak more of that later, when you are ready. Ah, uh, and I take it that the dragons are returning... The dragons returning are sort of a time of great need? <laughs> And I imagine the fact that the gods have decided to bestow this gift upon an Ultima, of all things, speaks to the absolute ruin that is Eleanor right at the moment, but we won't talk about that. No doubt, the appearance of a dragonborn at this time is not an accident. Your destiny is surely bound up with the return of the dragons. You should focus on honing your voice. And soon, your path will be made clear. Thank you, Master Ongir. I will continue my training in that case. Good. Then you will be ready for whatever lies ahead. I hope so. <laughs> ah. Sky, guard you. Oh, I'm... I'm so lost right now. The good thing is that it's very bright up here, so that I know this is here, for instance. Uh, hey, Myth? I'm over here. I'm Dragonborn. Yes. What does it mean? Apparently that I have the blood of the dragon or something. Uh, if you say so. Is that what lets you sneeze people over like that? <laughs> uh, yes? And also, do this. Watch. <laughs> that was impressive, but please... Try not to do that. <laughs> I'll do my best. This is warm. There's a fire here. There is. Thank the gods. <laughs> huh. So I have some sort of great destiny. I am apparently the chosen one. 
I'm incredibly confused by all this. I'm not sure what it all means besides the fact that we have to go get a horn out of a crypt somewhere and also deal with the dragons returning. Is that your fault? No. But the timing is not coincidental, probably. I'm just not sure what I can do about it, given that I am A. Blind, B. One person. And I have you with me, and you have a bow, which is very good, because you can actually see dragons and aim to shoot them. In theory, I could shout them out of the sky or something, but I can't see to aim. Which means I have to rely on you for that. That's all right by me. Right. So, we keep doing this adventuring thing together then. If you'd like. I mean, don't you have other business? Like whatever you're doing with the whole eastern half of Skyrim? Well, my business can wait, if the fate of the world depends on it. If the fate of the world depends on me keeping you from dying, anyway. <laughs> that would be quite useful, actually, yes. Uh, I can sort of see a line of smudge. Is that High Hrothgar, the actual keep place? It is. We will go back inside where it's... It's actually quite nice. Up here, with the sun out. So. We have to go find a place called Ustengrav, which... Handily, I have a map. Unhandily, I can't read it. Anyway, yeah. I'll be able to find it, don't you worry. Okay. Oh, and there's also this thing called the Way of the Voice, which is sort of like a meditative practice for uh, getting your spirit in tune with your actions or something. You don't seem to have a problem with that. I certainly hope I don't. But then I say things like the thing about Old Mary poetry that you caught me doing, and I don't know where we're going. I don't either. We could just stand. True. I think we're heading back down the mountain. Alright, well in that case just keep going straight. You'll hit the door eventually. <laughs> uh, I should do something like focus on not flying off the mountain. I will shout people off the mountain, maybe, but... Yeah. <laughs> so the way of the voice is... sort of... I'm not entirely sure how to explain it. I mean, you're a Dunmer. I assume that you have, like, meditative practices where you're from, but we do. I've never been the most devout, though, and I've, I've told you that. Right. Well, it's essentially a meditative practice as far as I've been able to tell. Uh, something something kind. Oh, also the dragon blood is apparently a gift from Akatosh. Which is interesting, because Akatosh is also Oriel, who is sort of the sun god person thing. 
I know who I could draw Shinoriel are. I may be a heathen Dunmer, but... <laughs> I suppose some gods just sort of defy uh, denomination? Something like that. I think Mara is the other one. Mara is the other one. So you were blessed by Akatosh or Oriel or something. You're the chosen one. Chosen to do what? I think that's what I'm supposed to find out. So far it seems like the answer is slay dragons. <laughs> and potentially fix the uh, the Thalmor problem. Which I'm actually terrified about. <laughs> Because I'm only one person, and the Thalmor are powerful. So... I'm not sure how... I or anyone else would manage to do that. You're right. Uh, yeah, no big deal, just... Just destiny. <laughs> By the way, there's a hollow in the rock over there. I'd like to look at it. Okay. It looks like a cave, which is why I say this. Alright. Oh. Well, it is in fact a cave. There's also a shrine of Akatosh in here, surprisingly. And a fire. Someone's been up here. Interesting. I guess this must be where Klimix stops. When he comes up here. That actually makes sense. I don't like how it sounds like the mountain is going to come down on our heads. Let's just get out of here, shall we? Indeed. <laughs>